And this giant thing swam out. It was a far shot, but he was going into some really, really shallow stuff. What do we do? What do I do? <laughs> but let's try it anyways. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be heading out to do some stingray bow fishing. We've done guided trips before and they turned out great. And since we've gotten pretty serious about the whole bow fishing thing, we figured why not go and try to do it ourselves. The stingray should be moving into the bays. That's kind of what we're hoping for anyways. And what they're doing when they come in is they're eating the clams and crabs. I guess the blue crabs are a big thing. And people don't really like when the stingrays are eating the crabs they want, I guess. Either way, I'm pretty excited to go chasing after some stingrays. So you guys stay tuned and see what happens. All right guys, so the weather today is not exactly what you want when you're bow fishing. We got a lot of overcast and it is super windy out today. I'm hoping that's not a big problem because the stingrays, they usually like to glide right on top of the water and you'll usually see them maybe like a foot below. So it could still work out. We're still gonna go out on the boat and see if we can see anything. It just, the sun's not out, at least yet. And that's usually what you want. So between the overcast and the wind, which is gonna cause a bunch of waves and ripply water. It's gonna to be tough, but we're gonna to try to work with it. What we're doing right now is we're checking the water. It's only like five feet deep here, and you should be able to see a ray in this stuff. When we've gone after them before, they like to coast right at the top, and with this being five feet deep, I mean, you should have no problem seeing them. It's just like bow fishing anything else. We'll be glancing. Next thing you know, here jumps this fish out of nowhere, and it's gone just like that. Look at all of those birds. That's insane. There's thousands. All right, so long story short, we didn't see any stingrays. We're thinking we came in just a little bit too early. The rays aren't in the bays yet, and the water clarity wasn't helping us at all. But we've already traveled this far, so we might as well make the trip worth it. So we're heading to fresh water in hopes of shooting some fish. We're stopped at this gas station, and look at the size of this frog out here. The thing is crazy. Have you guys ever seen a gas station muskrat before? It's a first for me. After we got done at the gas station, we were driving along, and we came across this deer. I was looking at it, and I'm like, what the heck is wrong with that thing? And I completely forgot that in Maryland, there's Sika deer. I mean, I'm not even kidding you when I was looking at it, and I was trying to figure out what was wrong with this deer. And then I remembered about the Sika deer being there, and that got me kind of pumped up. I might have to go back down for a future hunting trip. So the stingray bow fishing didn't go exactly to plan. We're thinking they haven't moved into the bays enough. So we're switching from salt water to fresh water. We're going to a spot where it's known for snakeheads. There's supposed to be tons of snakeheads and there could be catfish, gar, all that good stuff. We figured while we're down here, if even the stingray stuff isn't working out, at least we can chase after some other fish. For now we're just getting the boat all ready to go and then we're gonna get in the water. You guys stay tuned. It's not even dark yet, and we're seeing a bunch of mud. That's a good sign for once it gets dark. Yup! Yeah. Take a big gar. Okay, come on. I cannot believe what's just happened. This water's been awful to deal with. It's super murky, super muddy. It's just awful, and we're seeing tons of clouds, right? So obviously there's stuff in here, but all we've seen physically are just the uh, quillbacks. And then we're getting ready. We're about to motor up. Check that out, guys. My first long nose gar. That is intense. There it is, guys. Check that out. I was literally saying, if we see a catfish or a long nose gar, that'll make up for the muddy water and not seeing a bunch of fish. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, they got some good teeth on them. These things can get pretty big, but I was not passing up this. I can't believe that. It's been on my bucket list and to have this be one of the fish, the only fish that we see tonight so far, is very crazy to me. We're gonna keep bow fishing, we're gonna motor up a little ways, see if we can find anything else, but, but if nothing else, I got this long nose gar. After I shot that gar, the only thing else we ended up seeing was a bunch of quillbacks. And then the next morning, we went after stingrays once again, but just like the day prior, there was no stingrays. So once again, we're heading back to freshwater to chase after some fish. Big gar. Big gar and a snakehead right here. 
Here he goes, right in front of us. Got him. Not very good, though. What do we do? What do I do? <laughs> oh, he's pulling us in, isn't he? That's a big snake. Oh, oh God. Oh, he's in good enough. There you go. That is a big snakehead. That's what we've been after. They are a super pretty fish. We were having a rough time finding stuff, and then out of nowhere we see gar, snakehead, everything else popping up, and then this giant thing swam out. It was a far shot, but he was going into some really, really shallow stuff, so I decided, I'm like, well, I might as well take a shot. Ooh. And there just went one of the gars right there. It's crazy. I'm gonna pick up my bow and see if I can shoot anything else. That was a really big gar. Missed him. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dang it. That was. That's a monster one. I mean, that's crazy. I don't know what to do. Oh my god. There's a nice one out there. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Oh, I just shot this giant gar, guys. That thing's a tank. Here we go guys, I finally got one of the big long nose gar. Coming down here, I really wanted one just in general. And the other night, I finally managed to get one, not nearly as big as this guy right here. This is one of those big long nose gars that you see in pictures and stuff. And I've always wanted to get one like this. So this is pretty awesome. We came down here targeting stingrays, but the water and the conditions just weren't perfect. So we moved from salt water to fresh water and we made it work. We got a snakehead in the boat and a giant gar. Couldn't be happier about this. That's one. Got him. Snakehead? Carp. Carp? Well, that's different. Oh, right there's another one. He's going in. The rest of the night of bow fishing was pretty similar to the night before. Tons of mud, there's fish moving around, but you can't see them. So now it's time to head home and cook up the gar. Up to this point, all that I've done is one, I wash the fillets, and then two, they've just soaked in the fridge overnight in some salt water. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna rinse them off once again, and then I'm gonna pat them dry with some paper towels. We're gonna cook this gar pretty basic. We're gonna go in with some garlic butter. Turns out great every single time. I'm also gonna throw in some purple onions, and then we're gonna go for a lower sodium seasoning, Dano's Original. It's worked for literally everything I've tried so far. The meat consistency is a little bit different than some fish. It's pretty similar to bowfin. It's not nearly as mushy, but it still has like that kind of gummy texture, if you know what I'm saying. It's almost like it's coated in applesauce is what I would compare it to the most, but it doesn't fall apart nearly as much as bowfin does. Our garlic butter is looking pretty good, so now it's time to throw in some onions. These are super, super strong. We'll start off throwing a couple in. You know, maybe something. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. Why do I keep adding more? I don't know. I think that's plenty. Now it's time to throw in our gar fillets. That is smelling so good right now. I'll check on the fish meat in a couple minutes. There you go, guys. We got our gar all cooked up, and now we're going to try it. I can already tell you this is going to be tough, and I think the reason for that is there's like a silver skin type thing that I didn't cut off of these first fillets. And I think that's where I'm gonna go wrong. But let's try it anyways. The flavor's good. It tastes pretty similar to any other gar. It might have a little bit of like a fishy taste, you know, similar to like trout. But no, that's not bad at all, guys. You go check that out. Now that piece wasn't chewy at all. Just tastes like gar, I guess. It's what you're working with. I like this, I would eat it. It's not as good as snakehead, and it's not as good as when I've had gar before, but overall it tastes way better than I bet you think it does. 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It wasn't quite what we were expecting. We wanted to go down and shoot some stingrays. We think we might have been a little too early in the season. The water wasn't good. The weather wasn't great. It was overcast and rainy every day we were down there. So we decided to do some freshwater bow fishing instead, and that worked out great. We got snakehead, carp, and gar. So if you guys like content like this, subscribe for more. But this is all I have for today, so we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> and this guy, he likes the van. Whether or not he'll admit it, I know he does. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's a good rig. Enough room for two dudes, not just one, two.